Hello everyone, after a brief period for some time off and relaxation, we are back for another weekly flyby. Watch until the end as we have a lot to cover, including some exciting stuff about helicopters in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which we will be covering later since we go through the news in chronological order. <laughs> The new update brings the fly inside Bell 47 to version 1.80 and, among other things, it comes with a floats version. Dust kickup and water spray particle effects were also added and we are getting three new liveries for the floats version. All the previously available liveries now have a floats version available as well. The last item on the list of new features is something simple but very, very cool. The cabin doors can now be open. If you already have the fly inside Bell 47, you should get an notification from the software saying the new version is up or you can download it from the official website. If you don't have it yet, you can purchase it at the website as well. Check out the links in the video description. Winwing has been releasing some very interesting hardware. While this set is clearly targeted at the fixed wing simmer, it is an F-16 grip. After all, the company is also winking at the helicopter pilots. The Winwing F-16EX is based on the F-16 grip, of course, but it has a small extension to the left side, which you can see on the screenshots here and on the website as well. If you want for it to be exactly like the regular F-16 grip, you can simply remove it. It is that simple. Simple. Win Wing was kind enough to send me a unit checkout and I have made a review on it. The company has done a great job and this may be a fantastic option for the helicopter pilots looking for a more generic joystick instead of specific helicopter controls. Check out the review on our website to learn all about the Win Wing F16EX joystick grip with the Hotas Orion 2 base. AOA Simulations has released new renders of the upcoming V-22 Osprey for X-Plane. The team found some issues with their model and decided to improve it. In case you missed it, a little over two years ago we published a few renders of the AOA Simulations V-22 Osprey for X-Plane. And everything seemed to be okay. Unfortunately, when it comes to product development, things may not always go smoothly and that happened with AOA. On a recent Facebook post, the company shows new renders but these are much more than some mere up updates on the previous one that were released back in 2020. In fact, the company has pretty much redone most of the model. That post starts with a reassurance, the project is not that. The team justifies the delay with something that can be haunting for a lot of teams out there, the lack of developers or as they call it, human resources. And that is something I have seen a lot of companies mention as well. The team continues by saying, when we started to work on textures, we unfortunately had to realize that our 3D model has some big mistakes. The team continues by saying, when we started to work on the textures, we unfortunately had to realize that our 3D model had some big mistakes. The shape of the flaps was incorrect, the leading and trailing edges of the wings were not parallel, the tail was too short, the cargo doors were not rectangular. The wing folding animations caused collisions with the rest of the fuselage. It was a total no-go for us. As a result, AOA Simulations decided to rework the 3D model before going any further, and they add that this was certainly continue to evolve in the coming weeks. The V-22 will also benefit from work done on other projects. AOA Simulations has created a new library of generic and reusable digital gauges for the Texan 2. This library will greatly benefit the V-22 project. Of course, at this time, AOA is not indicating any estimated time for the release. I would say that they don't even want to try a guess at this time, especially if they are lacking the manpower. Soon after the last update of the AW139, X Rotor started talking about a new update based on the experience taken from the development of the AW109. According to X Rotors, the biggest change has to do with the model, especially the gears and rotors, but the whole model is being redone as the team is now using Blender. Some unfortunate health issues have also been allowing for some extra work, which provided the chance for the development of a fresh model with minimum recycling of components. X Rotors says that only 10 to 15 percent of the current model comes with the previous version and that this way they are managing to get rid of some issues and imperfections that they should have been taken care of before but with blender it is now possible to do new interiors and textures are also in the pipeline the flight dynamics and systems will be overhauled as well x rotor said the displays are getting an upgrade to primus epic version 3.0 which should be working on during the winter for x plane 12. considering this winter time frame this probably 
probably means we won't be seeing the model before the end of the year. If I would have to guess, I'd say that if we keep in mind not only the development side of things, but also testing and polishing, we may be potentially looking at a release for the first quarter of 2023. But keep in mind, this is only my own guessing and not an official estimate from X Rollers. The secret is out and so is the helicopter. The newest Joshua Cohen's creation is a popular H125 or AS350. Some of you actually guessed it right and it's great that we have a new version of the popular helicopter model. Joshua Cohen has released his H125 B3E for X-Plane. As usual with all the Cohen scene products, the H125 B3E is packed with great features. On top of this you can also find 4K PBR textures, cuts and 3D model instruments, a great cabin paint kit and 100 liveries, detailed night lighting and Reality XP GTN 650 and 750 integration. There are a lot of options for customization including an around the world option which removes passengers from the back seat and adds a lot of stuff in there for those huge trips well around the world. Joshua is already working on an update as he is gathering feedback from the large fan base which obviously includes pilots with experience in the real model. A review by us will also be out in a few weeks as we get one of our riders, a pilot with time in this particular type, on the case, so stay tuned. You can get Cohen Simulation H125 for x plane on their website, just check out the link in the video description. On their stream, which went live a few days ago, Milvi said that the company is branching out as the current name was getting known within the military clients and they want to separate things. The tentative new name is Blackbird Simulations, but only for the consumer market. As they went along on the stream, Milvi also showed a bit of the upcoming UE for Microsoft Flight Sim. The person showing it is not admittedly a helicopter pilot, so it was a bit hard to understand the complexity of the flight dynamics and how good it really was. Colin Pearson, the CEO of the company, said that the flight dynamics profile which is developed by Milvis was approved by the Air Force which means it should be an interesting helicopter to fly. Milvis is also talking with Microsoft so that they can integrate it with the native helicopter support which is coming in November. The UE will be made available in both a military which will be the UH-1H and civilian versions. Weapons which will be removed are not going to be functional but they are looking into eventually making that happen in the future. While the C and D versions are not out of the question, Milvis is not making any promises at this time. During the stream, a twin engine version of the UE, the UH-1N was shown and Colin said they will also develop a UH-1Y Viper and the AH-1Z Venom, but this will come at a later stage. During their last dev Q&A session, Microsoft and Azobo talked a bit about the work done with helicopters and showcased one of the two default ones that will be made available in November. Sebastian Vlock, CEO of Azobo, started the helicopter update segment by saying that the team has made a lot of progress on helicopters and that they took their first helicopter lessons. As he started showing the Gimbal Cabra G2, he added that they had instructors which are specialized in this helicopter, fly the helicopter in the sim and they were very impressed. The team obviously took that chance to gather some feedback. During the update, Sebastian also mentioned a few of the effects helicopters are subject to, such as transverse flow for example. We could also see a tool the team has developed that shows the airflow around the helicopter and allows them to see what's going on. As the tool was turned on, it was possible to see the G2 starting to enter into vortex ring state. Ground effect was also clearly visible, which was quite impressive to see. Sebastian now has some experience in the G2 and said that everything is very realistic. Although in the video he had activated an advanced assistance system which made everything easier for those that may need the help. This is great news and something I was hoping Microsoft would eventually develop. Temperature and weight are always a factor when flying helicopters and Sebastian mentioned it as well. He gave the example of a session in which the temperature was very high and the only way to take off the real G2 was to get some photos with speed to take advantage of translational lift and he indicated the same already happens in the sim. It is of course very difficult to judge a flight model by looking at the video, especially such a limited one where we don't see a lot of maneuvers and with the assistance system turned on. But having into consideration what we see in the visualization tool and some of the movements of the helicopter visible in the video, things seem to be shaping really well. Microsoft has promised some more details soon as they will be present at Gamescom in a few days. If you are interested to learn more about helicopters in Microsoft Flight Simulation and what's coming, we have prepared the playlist for you. I'll be seeing you all on those videos or in the next weekly flyby. Until then, take care and fly safe.